Today, we are going to look at a body vis brain builder about the large intestine and umbilical hernias. The function of the large intestine is the reabsorption of water from the semi-solid chyme that exits the small intestine. This results in the formation of feces that will be temporarily stored within the distal portions of the large intestine before it is removed from the body via the anal canal. The large intestine possesses three gross anatomical characteristics, which are one, it has a significantly larger diameter than the small intestine. Two, it possesses tinei coli, which are three distinct visible bands of smooth muscle located within the muscularis externa of the intestinal wall. Three, it has hostra, which are saculations of the intestinal wall located between the tinea coli. The large intestine is subdivided into the following segments, the cecum and the associated appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and anal canal. The cecum, which is the first portion of the large intestine, is continuous with the terminal segment of the ileum proximally and the ascending colon distally. It is located in the lower right quadrant of the abdominal cavity. The appendix is a smaller tubular appendage located off of the cecum. The appendix is rich in lymphatic tissue and often becomes clogged with fecal matter, which may lead to appendicitis. The ascending colon ascends on the right side of the abdominal cavity. The ascending colon turns left at the right colic flexure, also known as the hepatic flexure, and becomes the transverse colon. The transverse colon, which is the longest and most mobile segment of the large intestine, crosses the abdomen cavity from the right to the left, inferior to the diaphragm. The transverse colon ends at the left colic flexure. The descending colon begins at the left colic flexure and ends at the sigmoid colon. The S-shaped sigmoid colon is continuous proximally with the descending colon and distally with the rectum. The rectum and the anal canal are the terminal portions of the colon. The linea alba is a sheath of connective tissue that separates the right and left rectus abdominis muscles and carries nerves and blood vessels to the anterior abdominal wall. Approximately at its midpoint, the linea alba lies deep to the umbilicus and contains the umbilical ring. Next, let's learn about umbilical hernias. A hernia is defined as a protrusion of an organ or any part of an organ through a weakness or gap in the abdominal wall. Umbilical hernias are a specific type of hernia in which the patient has an imperfect closure or weakness of the umbilical ring, resulting in a protrusion of abdominal contents such as a portion of the small or large intestine, through the umbilicus. Next, we will look at the symptoms, causes, and treatments for umbilical hernias, and finally, give a patient example. The symptom of an umbilical hernia is the presence of a lump at or near the umbilicus that gets larger during laughing, coughing, crying, or defecation. This lump is usually painless in children. However, umbilical hernias that develop in adults typically cause abdominal discomfort. Umbilical hernias are the most common form of hernia seen in infants and young children. Although less common, umbilical hernias are also seen in adults. Possible causes for adults who develop hernias include obesity, chronic health conditions that raise abdominal pressure, like a chronic cough and prolonged constipation routinely lifting heavy objects, or having given birth to twins or triplets. With infants or young children, an umbilical hernia will often go back in, and the muscles of the umbilical ring will reseal before the ages of five or six years old. Treatments for an umbilical hernia in adults often requires surgical repair that involves the movement of the protruding abdominal contents back into the abdominal cavity and strengthening any areas of weakness in the abdominal wall. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 33. Sex, male. Chief complaint, abdominal pain. You invite the patient into your office for an examination. Your patient works in a warehouse and has a very active job. 
Yesterday evening, he started noticing that his abdomen was sensitive when he got home from work. That night, when he was changing, he noticed that his umbilicus looked different than normal. When he touched it, he felt pain and decided to come in today. You examine your patient and ask if there's anything that seems to make the pain worse. He explains that whenever he laughs, the pain is worse and the lump at his umbilicus becomes larger. You recognize this as an umbilical hernia and send for a CT. You schedule a surgery to place the protruding abdominal contents back into the abdominal cavity and strengthen any areas of weakness in the abdominal wall. You explain to your patient that moving forward, they should avoid heavy lifting whenever possible to prevent any future hernias. This is a classic example of an umbilical hernia. Thank you for watching this Brain Builder video. Please like and subscribe to our BodyViz channel. Or if you're new at BodyViz, check out our other anatomy resources and schedule a demo at bodyviz.com.